One of my favorite character moments in Shin Kamen Rider is the exchange between Hongo and Ichimonji right before they fight the Shocker Riders. The nuances in the Japanese language dialogue breathe a new layer of depth to their exchange that I want to analyze in today's video. Before I get into the dialogue between the double riders, let's talk about pronouns in Japanese. There are three common Japanese pronouns, watashi, boku, and ore. Watashi is the most formal of the three pronouns. Either gender can use this pronoun. People say it's the most feminine of the three, but I disagree with that. In fictional media, this pronoun is attached to a lot of female characters because of the other two pronouns, Boku and Ore, are mostly attached to male characters. If you're using polite speech, it's safe to use Watashi. Next on the list is Boku. It is still considered formal, so you can still use this with polite speech. Boku is used primarily by male characters in anime and J-dramas. Characters who use this speech tend to be very polite and humble. Examples of male characters who use Boku are Shigure from Fruits Basket, Gohan from Dragon Ball, and Philip from Kamen Rider Double. Now, ore is the most informal of the main three pronouns, and is not commonly used with polite speech in Japanese. Characters who use this pronoun are strong, casual, and in most cases, are among friends. It conveys a sense of familiarity over masculinity. Examples of characters who use this pronoun are Naruto and the majority of lead Kamen writers. In the original 1971 TV series, Hongo is kind, smart, tough, and resolved. Upon learning of Shocker and their plans for world domination, our grasshopper hero declares a one-man war against Shocker. Of the three pronouns, Hongo uses Ore. In Shin Kamen Rider, Hongo is more vulnerable and gentle. At the beginning of the film, the moment his senses return to him, he is riddled with the guilt of taking human life. But despite learning that he was remodeled against his will and turned into a weapon to fight against Shocker, he joins Ruriko in her quest to take down the evil organization. His actions are driven by the memory of his father, who, at the very end, wanted to preserve life at the cost of his own. In contrast to the 1971 series, Hongo here uses the Boku pronoun, a very interesting change to the character, but still very fitting. Ichimonji in Shin Kamen Rider is still snarky like his original counterpart, but unlike Hongo, who was silent as he murdered all of Spider Augment's underlings, Ichimonji still maintained his talkative personality despite being under Shocker's influence. Like in 1971, Ichimonji uses the Ore pronoun. His actions are driven by his mood, on whether he wants to do something or not and despite not liking crowds and preferring solitude, he doesn't want to be alone. When he sees Kamen Rider number 1 set off alone to fight Shocker, he doesn't join him at first, until he realizes the connection he has with Hongo. And just in the nick of time, Ichimonji joins Hongo in the final battle. But before moving forward, Ichimonji wants to bridge their relationship together by correcting Hongo's way of speech. When Ichimonji reaches his hand out and asks Hongo if he's okay, Hongo responds, which does mean sorry. But it's also a very indirect and polite way of saying thank you. Ichimonji responds, that's not gratitude, that's an apology. In the Japanese language, the more indirect you are, the more polite your expression becomes. You would only use indirect expressions when the person you are talking to is someone you don't know or someone of a higher status. Hongo corrects himself and uses the direct way of saying thank you, but adds the kun honorific to Ichimonji's name. Now, I don't want to get into honorifics too much in this video, but kun is still a semi-formal honorific usually used with a younger colleague or someone of the same age. Upon hearing this, Ichimonji replies, drop the honorific. And from here, the double riders are born, free of any walls in their relationship. While their interactions together before this are short, it's enough to establish the kind of relationship we wanted to see between the two. I feel like if they were together longer and in more scenes together before this, their exchange here wouldn't work as well. Hongo has spent the majority of the film with Ruriko, but Hongo didn't change much from their interactions together. In fact, it was the other way around. Ruriko was distant at the beginning of the film. She addressed Hongo using the second person pronoun, Anata, which is used when you have no information about the person you're speaking with, and in some cases, sounds condescending. But as the movie progressed, we see her open up more and finds comfort in Hongo's presence. And in her final message to him, she calls him by his first name. Shin Kamen Rider allowed us to experience these characters in a new light. And here, the Japanese language also plays a part as a literary device to explore these new relationships. 